Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at the brand new release of Kali Linux 2021.4. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. With the new release of Kali Linux, it brings a lot of updates and a lot of new tools. So let's go over that real quick. Right off the bat, you've got Apple M1 support for VMware Fusion Public Tech Preview. Wide compatibility is enabled for Samba. It's making it easier to switch to Cloudflare's Package Manage Mirror. KBoxer updated with support for window themes and icon themes. Updates to the XFCE, GNOME, and KDE desktops. Raspberry Pi Zero 2, W Plus USB Armory, MK2 ARM images, and nine more tools. Now, if you scroll down here, it lets you know, especially on the Apple M1, it was already possible to install Kali Linux on Parallels on the Apple Silicon Max, but with this new update, you can now also install the distro on the VMware Fusion Public Tech Preview, as a new kernel includes the modules needed for the virtual GPU. If you use Kali's installer, it will automatically detect it if you're installing it on VMware. And then Samba gets wider compatibility. As insecure protocols are discovered in Samba, they are commonly disabled by default on Linux distros. As Kali Linux is a penetration test distribution, it is better to enable all protocols so that pen testers can find older, vulnerable implementations. And then if you scroll down, you've got nine new tools. You've got Duffel Bag, Search Exposed EBS Volumes for Secrets, Merriam, Open Source Intelligence Framework, Name That Hash. If you don't know what type of hash it is, Name That Hash will name the hash type for you. Proxmark 3, if you are into Proxmark 3 and RFID hacking. Reverse Proxy Grapher, Graphics Graph Illustrating Your Reverse Proxy Flow. S3 Scanner, you can scan for open S3 buckets and dump the contents. Spray Cats, Credentials Gathering Tool, Automating Remote Proc Dump and Parse of ISIS Process. Truffle Hog, searches through Git repositories for high entropy strings and secrets, digging deep into the commit history. And then Web of Trust Grapher, re-implement the defunct PGP Pathfinder without needing anything other than your own key ring. And then they also have enhanced ARM support and a couple of more things that they've added. But this is really awesome. This is a big update for Kali. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's an open source Debian Linux distro. It's geared toward information security tasks, penetration testing, security research, computer forensics, reverse engineering. It's the industry standard. It makes your job easier. Kali's everywhere. It's got a great community should you have any issues. It's got all the tools that you need, everything from Wireshark to Multigo. And then Kali everywhere. You've got an undercover mode. you got Kali NetHunter, which is a mobile penetration testing platform for Android devices. You've got Winkex, and you can put it on ARM, bare metal, use it from the cloud, containers, WSL, virtual machines, USB, mobile, and then you can choose the desktop you prefer, XFCE, GNOME Shell, KDE Plasma. Today, we're looking at it in the XFCE environment. And then you've got latest news from their blog. And this website is really awesome. It's got a lot of information and it keeps you up to date with everything. And then up top, you've got Git Kali, blog, documentation, community, courses, developers, and about. You can even take a course over here to learn how to do some pen testing. So... That's up to y'all. If it's something you might be interested in, I suggest you zip on over to Kali.org, download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine. Now, if you do that, this is the screen you're going to be met with. Basic look, it's XFC environment. You got one panel up top. If you right click on the desktop, you've got create launcher, create document, open terminal here, arrange desktop icons, desktop settings. Let's go ahead and check that out. There's your wallpapers. You can change those up if you like. They've got several different ones that you can look at. I like the one it come with out of the box, honestly. I also like that one. And I think I'm going to stick with... I think I'm going to do that one right there. So let's go ahead and zip on over to menus. Right here, you can adjust your desktop menus or your window list menus. You can customize those the way you like. And then icons. Over here, you can make your icons bigger or smaller. 
If you look, they're over here. They get bigger and smaller. You can move them top vertical right if you want to. Arrange the icons. It'll move them over here if you'd rather have them over here. That's just up to you. This is just another area you can customize. And if you don't even want them on the desktop, you can come over here and just click them off and they'll disappear. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Up on the panel, you've got power, you've got lock computer, you've got date and time, battery, notifications, sound, and then of course your internet. It gives you a little area right here that shows you the RAM that's being used and the CPUs that's being used. It's just a quick way to get to your task manager. So you have that little applet right there. Now, if you right click on the panel, it's got properties, move, remove, and then panel. You can add new items, panel preferences. Let's go ahead and open that up. And right here, you can change the panel up if you want to. It's in horizontal mode right now. If you wanted to, you could change that to a vertical mode and it would change it to vertical over here. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it on horizontal because I like the way it looks. You can automatically hide the panel. Never intelligently or always. Always hide. You just click on it, close, and it goes away. And then when you hover over it, it comes back. So let's go ahead, right click. Let's go back over here, panel preferences. And I'm going to turn that auto hide off. And then your row size. You can adjust the size of your rows up here. And then you can also adjust the number of rows. If you go to two, if you notice, it gets a little bigger. And then if you open up another application, it would actually stack here as opposed to just getting wide all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and back that back down. Then you have appearance. It's set on dark mode. Background, you can use a solid color if you would like up here. Or you could even change it down here. Background image, if you wanted to adjust that to a background image, you could. That's just up to you, whatever you want to customize and however you want to make it look. And then items, lets you know items that you can add up here. Everything from a whisker menu, separator, directory menu, generic monitor, just whatever you might want to add up here. But that's up to you. So let's go ahead and close out of that. If you come to the left, you got your four desktops up here. So you can switch between those. You got terminal. You can either go root terminal or PowerShell. Let's go ahead and open that up. Now that it's open, I want to see if they have HTOP installed. And they don't. So let's go with top. And let's go ahead and maximize that. I have issued this machine four gigabytes of RAM at present at rest with just the terminal open. You're using 790 megabytes of RAM. So that's a mid weight if I had to guess. But there's a lot of tools that are installed on this machine and with the system monitor running up here, you're going to, it's going to be a little bit heavier guys. So I'm going to minimize that and close it. Then you've got Firefox, which we already looked at your text editor, just a simple text editor. You can pull that up and it's right there quick and ready to go. Then you've got your home folder. You can open this up. If you want to open up a desktop folder or open folder, you can do it right there from a drop down. And then you've got show desktop. And then you've got your application launcher. You've got favorites, recently used, all applications, settings. You come over here, you've got your settings manager. Let's take a look at that. And in your settings, you can adjust everything from appearance. Let's go ahead and double click on appearance. Right now, you're using Kali Dark. You could switch that to Kali Light if you wanted to. You could go to Add Way to Dark. I'm going to switch it back to Kali Dark. With a click of a button, you can change the way the OS looks. Icons, right now we're using the Flat Remix Blue Dark. You could come down and change those if you wanted to. You could switch them over to a Windows 10 theme if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and click on that and see what happens. And as you can see, everything up here looks like Windows 10. You got your folder look and then your notepad look. And then, of course, your terminal. I'm going to go ahead and go back to what we were at. Okay, and everything is switched back. So you can switch over to fonts. Right now, you're using the Cantrail regular on a size 11. If you wanted to, you could go in here and bump those up to a 13. Hit select, and as you can tell, everything got a little bigger, and it's easier to read. And then settings. Show images on buttons, show images in menus. That's really up to your personal preference and what you want to do. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then we will come back over. You've got accessibility, Bluetooth adapters, default applications, Kali tweaks. Just so many different things you can adjust in here. Usual applications. You've got accessories, which is like your application finder, cherry tree, root terminal, screenshot, and then on development, you've got a database browser, graphics, you've got Restretto image viewer, and then internet, you've got the Chromium browser, Firefox ESR, which is the one we were using earlier, your mail reader, X-Hydra, multimedia, parole media player, pulse audio controls, office, you've got antral document viewer, and then other, 
You've got the Faraday stop, Cali high DPI mode, and then of course your system. So you can go back over on usual applications. You've got information gathering. Now this is where all your tools fall under. It's got a great amount of tools here, guys. So if this is something you're definitely interested in, Cali's definitely the distro to give it a shot in. Vulnerability analysis, web application analysis, database assessment, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering, exploitation tools, sniffing and spoofing, post-exploitation, forensics, reporting tools, social engineering tools, Cali and offset links. And this up here gives you Cali bugs, Cali docs, Cali forums, and things like that. If Cali Linux is something that you've been looking at and wondering if you wanted to take a test drive in, now is definitely the time to do it. With so many updates coming to it and new tools that have been added, you need to zip on over to their website, download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine. I'll be sure to include that link below. But let me know what you think. Is it something you might download and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.